and Kelly. We welcome you into Hancock and Kelly here on Fox 2. We have with us this morning, as always, John Hancock and Michael Kelly. And I'm Mike Colombo in today for John Brown. We have a lot to get to on what has been a busy week across the political spectrum. Most notably, Wednesday saw the inauguration of President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. So much is made, fellas, of the first 100 days in office for a new administration. Let's look into the crystal ball a little bit here. Michael, I want to start with you answering this question. The first 100 days of this administration will be successful if this happens. What are those things? The office and the of president of the United States. Our president of the United States. All right, John, the first 100 days of this administration will have been unsuccessful if this happens. What are those things? Well, if the, if the vaccine doesn't get, uh, he set the marker at 100 million doses in the first 100 days. Uh, that's, a, that's a standard that they need to meet. Uh, if they're unable to get a stimulus package through the House and the Senate, uh, that would be a problem. But, you know, this president is going to have a genuine honeymoon period. And it's, so I expect that uh, those first hundred days will be successful, but time will tell. The main theme for President Biden's inauguration speech Wednesday was unity. But there are already major questions about whether the president and his supporters are ready to back up those words with actions. Fox News correspondent David Spunt takes a look. We can join forces. Stop the shouting and lower the temperature. A direct call from the new commander in chief of an intensely divided nation. Just hours later, anti government protesters, some claiming to be tied to Antifa, trashed parts of Portland, Seattle, and Denver, despite the president's call for calm. Some Republicans are dismayed President Biden has not publicly opposed impeachment for his predecessor. It looks to me like it's it's continuation of the personal animus. Maybe it's a continuation of this uh, idea that you want to cancel uh, President Trump's presidency, remove him from the, the history books. Big Tech put a muzzle on the former president. His supporters say it's unfair and there's a double standard. More than 500 professionals in the publishing industry signed a letter with the phrase, no book deals for traitors. Senator Josh Hawley lost a deal with Simon & Schuster following the Capitol riots. My company, Regnery Publishing, picked the book up very quickly after Simon canceled it. And Simon & Schuster has given us a publicity campaign that, you know, we couldn't have paid, paid for. This is summer hinting Trump supporters need some serious changes. How are we going to really almost deprogram these people who have signed up for the cult of Trump? Not only did they win, uh, they are determined to punish and degrade and call half of this country racist while their candidate that they supported is out there with this unity message ringing a bell. The actions are not matching. In Washington, David Spunt, Fox News. All right, John, I'll begin with you this time around. It seems we have these two fractions of the, or factions, I should say, of the Republican Party. Uh, the always Trump people and the maybe never again Trump people. What do we do to either bring them together or get some sort of majority where the Republican Party can work to rebuild something so that when 2024 rolls around, there is a legitimate candidate, whether that be President Trump or not, that can be perhaps a bit more unifying both for the party and also those who are in the middle who would vote Republican if the candidate was right. Well, the first step in both parties is there needs to be a repudiation of the radical fringes. And both parties have them. Both parties have them, and they are violent in both parties. The Republican Party needs to repudiate the white supremacists that uh, made up a good chunk of that crowd that stormed the Capitol on January the 6th. The Democratic Party needs to give voice and speak out against Antifa. Uh, that's not happened yet. Now, when we when we get to the future of the Republican Party, I think we're going to need to craft a consistent conservative message uh, that speaks to the benefit of free markets, that talks about the values of liberty, uh, that speaks to uh, the cultural right of center where this country is culturally. And I think if Republicans can do that, it remains to be seen. 
But if Republicans can do that, there's a there's a quite a bright future. The 22 midterms historically should be very good for Republicans. We'll see. And Michael, from the Democratic side of things, how do you try to and I almost hate to use the word compromise because we've not seen a whole lot of compromise, particularly from the Republican led Senate in the Trump administration. How do you work to get things done by perhaps giving a little bit of leash while also not doing as Democrats have done in previous years and administrations and perhaps given a bit too much? Well, the circumstances are such that it probably puts the Democrats in the best spot. Look, most of the issues that we're facing as it relates to the pandemic and the carnage that's taken place in our economy and the insurrection are all things that both Republicans and Democrats agree on, things that we need to solve. And I think the key for Democrats is to keep the eye on the ball. If we can put these victories in our pocket over the next couple of months, it's going to give them an even broader landscape to be able to move forward with some legislative agendas and hopefully build some of that cooperation. But at the end of the day, the, the pandemic shouldn't be partisan. And, and I think that the Democrats, if we put that focus led by the president of the United States, it's ultimately going to be a net gain, not only for our country, because we will be saving lives, but for the Democratic Party, because we're bringing unity in a very divisive time. Speaking of unity or the idea of unity, the idea of partisanship, this is something that I'm very interested to see what party lines have to do. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer saying that the House's article of impeachment will be delivered to the Senate on Monday, triggering the start of the Senate's impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump. After that insurrection at the Capitol on January 6th, there was a lot of talk about the possibility of some Republicans in the Senate possibly going along with Democrats as it relates to this impeachment. Time has passed now, and as we get further from that date, I'm interested to know, we'll start with John again, what you think might happen as we delve into this second impeachment trial. Well, there's no question but that the rhetoric uh, leading up to the march on the Capitol was not helpful. Uh, did, did the president incite that riot? Well, there's plenty of evidence that the folks, that those extremists uh, planned to storm the Capitol uh, long before that rally launched. Now, will there be some Republicans that vote for removal here and, and conviction? Yeah, I think there will be. Will there be 17? Because that's what would be required for conviction. I would be shocked if there are 17 votes for that. So we're going to end this the way we ended the last impeachment. Uh, but I think, you know, Donald Trump has some, culp some culpability uh, for the kind of rhetoric in the weeks leading up to that rally that's, uh, that's real and substantial. Michael? Well, I mean, the president of the United States was the one who scheduled the rally almost immediately after the election, told people to come to Washington, D.C. It was going to be wild. Of course, he needs to be held accountable. And I think that we're going to see a significant amount of Republicans come that way. You know, the Republican leader of the Senate, Mitch McConnell, is an institutionalist. He's also a guy who's able to pull off things at times that, you know, most people thought couldn't happen. It's no secret that he has real issues with Donald Trump and would like to see him really purged from the Republican Party. If Mitch McConnell puts his weight behind this exercise, I think it's very possible that we could see those uh, necessary Republicans coming over to impeach the president, make it so that he cannot run for office, and to stand by some words that the Republicans like to use, which is law and order. And that's what this really is all about. All right, we are off in rolling for this edition of Hancock and Kelly. When we return, we're going to dig into the work President Biden is doing already when it comes to executive orders. We will be right back. Bye.